Let's face it, most of us want to become rich. But do we actually have an idea of what that actually is? So in today's show, I'm going to be unbunking some of the biggest myths about rich people. And while these myths are interesting, they also hold some clues as how we too can perhaps become rich someday, and more importantly, stay that way. So welcome to this month's Rich Habits, Poor Habits podcast, the monthly show I have with Tom Corley in between my regular Michael Yardney podcast. Welcome to the Michael Yardney podcast, where each week you will learn a number of new ideas regarding success, property investment, and money in around 30 minutes. Our show is brought to you by Metropole, who specialize in helping you grow, protect, and pass on your wealth through strategic property advice. Now, here's your host, Michael Yardney, Australia's most trusted property commentator, who has once again been voted our leading expert in wealth creation. That's the fifth time he's won a similar award in the last seven years. When we see rich people, either in our daily lives or in the media, we make assumptions about them. You know, we look at their monikers of wealth, the designer handbags, the expensive sunglasses, the luxury cars, and that usually helps us identify the status of that individual and make some seemingly logical assumptions about their lifestyles and how they became rich. But interestingly, there are many misconceptions about rich people, and that's what I want to discuss in today's episode of the Michael Yardney podcast. This is my monthly Rich Habits, Poor Habits podcast that I'm going to be sharing with Tom Corley in just a moment. Growing up, I know around me people were saying things like, you know, rich people are evil, they're selfish, they're greedy. But the problem is these poor conversations will make you think, if rich people are like that, I don't want to be part of it. However, as I became an adult, I found that that wasn't the case around rich people. In fact, I found that your ability to accumulate wealth depends upon how you think about money and how you think about rich people. So if you believe negative things about money and about rich people that they're bad, you may be creating an undertow of self-sabotage that keeps you from being successful. So let's have a chat with Tom Corley about what rich people really are like so that maybe you can learn how to become one of them too. If you're like most people who listen to my podcast, you want to become more successful, you want to become wealthier, you want to become richer. But if you were like me, and a lot of people when you grew up, you were given some, let's call them interesting ideas about rich people. Because if you grew up in a poor household, you were often led to believe that the rich were greedy, uh, dirty money, filthy rich. All those words were probably expressed to you. And I know that also occurred to my good friend, Tom Corley. So I'd like to have a chat with him about that because he's written some interesting things about what he's learned and the myths he learned about money as a child. So welcome, Tom. Hey, Michael, it's good to be talking to you again. Now, I know some of your background, your family were very wealthy and then became very poor as well. So you've experienced the rich and the poor, and you've also studied the rich and the poor, and you've written a lot about that. But uh, from what I understand, you were told, you were taught some, let's call them myths about money and wealth when you were young. Yeah, it's amazing what poverty will do to you, Michael. Uh, You know, I I don't remember much about being wealthy because we became poor when I was age nine. Uh, But I imagine until we became poor, I imagine we had a lot of nice things to say about wealthy people. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) When we became poor. I guess that's partly because if you're not wealthy or successful in your own mind, and you can be successful as a parent, you can be successful as a person, but maybe not as much financially successful. It actually is hard to admire wealthy people because you think, well, I should be there as well. So you say, unfortunately, some nasty things about them. The trouble is you pass these thoughts on to your children, which don't make them become successful. So I guess the purpose of the chat I want to have with you today is for our listeners to, first of all, learn about themselves and some of the thinking they've got that may be holding them back today, but also the ability to learn these things so they can pass them on as parents and grandparents, Tom. 
Yeah, you know, this is this is like up, uh, uprooting a tree, you know, pulling the roots out of a tree because it re- involves beliefs. And whenever beliefs are involved, I don't care if you if you believe that the sun revolves around the earth and somebody says, no, look, I have video. Here's the earth revolving around the sun. You're going to say, I don't believe it because beliefs are so hard to rip out of the ground. And people run around their whole lives, Michael, holding on to beliefs that are false. And one of the beliefs is that uh, rich people uh, are just uh, bad, negative, uh, hateful, greedy uh, people. Uh, that you know. That's you know. So so we what we're trying to do is educate people. Maybe we'll have a, a, the ability to help them pivot their beliefs a little bit. And change their thinking about rich people, because if we can do that, uh, then we're going to be able to help them get on the path of, of riches. Well, I guess the reason we're calling some of these thoughts in this discussion myths is because they're not right, but they're commonly believed. And one of the common myths is that rich people inherited their money. Now, there's no doubt that there is a generation of old money, established money, uh, but there's lots of rich people who are self-made millionaires. I know you found that in your study. Yeah. So, so what I found in my study is that eighty-two uh, percent of the wealthy didn't inherit a damn thing. They, in fact, um, uh, they most of them came from either poverty or the middle class. Now, it's not just t- you know Tom Corley's rich habits study that says that. Wealth X says it. It's, that's a, they do a wealth report every year. The Pew Research Center has has research on this. The big accounting firms, are the Young, KPMG, they have their own research on this. So it's somewhere between 69% and 82% of the wealthy came from uh, poverty or the middle class. The answer, what that really means is that anyone listening to this, anyone listening uh, who's living in a a good country, a developed country, has got the ability to become rich. So therefore, you should admire the rich, you should see what they've done, you should learn how they've done it, and you should emulate them, and you should develop rich habits, uh, which of course we've written about in our Rich Habits, Poor Habits book. I think another myth that I heard as I was young was that rich people don't have to work hard. You got that image of them accumulating their money while they're sitting at their country club, uh, uh, lounging around, sitting cigars and uh, smoking cigars, I should say, and sipping their whiskey. But that's not true, is it, Tom? No. Uh, I mean, you know, take let's take their country club. Uh, substitute their country club for your couch. So if you're poor, instead of sit, you know, being in a country club playing tennis or golf, you're sitting on the couch watching TV for hours. Uh, so my, my point is this. Uh, they work hard. They don't relax more than poor people. That's a myth. In fact, in my study, the wealthy worked 11 hours more a week than the poor people. So that's a myth. They work harder uh, and they work longer hours. And uh, yeah, sure. When they do take time off, it seems like, you know, they're, they're, you know, at these country clubs or on their yachts or their boats or they're doing fun things. But that's just, you know, we have... Poor people have the same amount of time off. It's just that they're not doing those things. They're sitting on a couch or they're sitting on a stoop, or but they're not going anywhere. Well, it's clearly a myth because you can't become successful in any area of life, including money if we're talking about rich, uh, without hard work, without failure along the way, without getting up one more time and uh, uh, looking adversity in the eye and, and beating it. So, yes, they do work longer hours, That's a myth. Another myth is that rich people pay less income tax than everybody else. Now, I know in Australia, there are tax perks that the government are trying to take away at the moment from what they call greedy property investors. Um, And I know there are loopholes and you can write your car off and other things in business. Uh, And I know it's much the same in America. There's a lower corporate tax rate. And they're talking here in Australia about lowering the corporate tax rate. But is it true that rich people pay less tax than everyone else and that they're taking advantage of the system? Yeah, Michael, this is another one. This reminds me of what my mother used to say. She used to say, ignorance is bliss. And this is one of those uh, particular myths that uh, have been perpetrated on people by politicians. Why? Because certain politicians want to tax you more so they can get more money 
so that they can spend more money. So this is a, 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 just a false political statement. Now, granted, you have super wealthy people like Warren Buffett and uh, probably Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg. These individuals, they have so much wealth that, and they have their wealth invested in tax-advantaged investments. I'm not talking about those people because they only represent about one half of 1% of the wealthy. So what I'm talking about is 99.5% of the people who are wealthy, for the most part, they have to earn their wealth. And they earn it over many, many years. And they pay an enormous amount of tax on their earnings. Sure, when when they've accumulated their wealth later in life, they may be able to, uh, you know, invest their wealth in ways that reduces uh, how much tax they pay. But by and large, the, the money that they earn to accumulate that wealth is taxed heavily. And uh, in fact, in the United States, um, the top 1% earners, these are the people who earn their money, they uh, pay 20, almost 23% income tax, whereas the bottom 50% in the United States, they pay 14% income tax. Uh, the bottom 50% of income earners in the U.S. pay just 3% of all of the tax that we collect. So the, the well, if it wasn't for wealthy people, we literally would have no income tax revenues. Uh, there'd be very little. Sure. So I guess the answer is the wealthy do pay more than their fair share of tax. And well, no one likes paying tax. It is necessary. We have to pay for the police force and the ambulances and the hospitals and all the rest. So I accept that. But Tom, others say the rich, another myth is really the rich are rich because they got lucky. Because people like to think that it's luck that got them there. So that, that well, that's just why I haven't become rich because I haven't been lucky. Is that true? Yeah. So what I found, because to me, I uh, remember I hated rich people. So I thought rich people were rich because of luck. So I asked the wealthy people in my study if they were wealthy because of luck. And I was uh, surprised because I guess I didn't understand what luck meant. I learned that luck is, there's really four types of luck. There's uh, random good luck, random bad luck. There's opportunity good luck and detrimental bad luck. The, The luck that the wealthy people in my study experienced was something I called opportunity luck. That was 92% of the wealthy in my study, in effect, created their own luck. They pursued dreams and goals. And uh, when you, you know, it's like going down a rabbit hole. You maybe don't know 100% what you're going to find down there, but sometimes, oftentimes, uh, you know, your expectations are exceeded. You might make way more money than you ever expected. Uh, And this is what happened with the wealthy people in my study. They just, 92% of them, because they took action and pursued dreams and goals, they got lucky. Only 8% of them acknowledged or said that they were just dumb luck. Another myth is the rich are better educated. They got a college education, and for that reason, they were able to climb up the ladder of success. But I know that your study and others have shown that's not true. Yeah, so in my study, 32% of the self-made millionaires did not have a college degree. Let me repeat that again. 32%, a third of the self-made millionaires did not have a college degree. And some of those individuals, most of them, pursued dreams, uh, you know, starting a business, uh, something they were passionate about, because they couldn't get employed. So they went and worked for someone, learned a skill, and then they started a business. And uh, they figured out what to do and what not to do. And uh, th- that 32% didn't need a college degree. I, I, quite frankly, in my opinion, unless you're going to become a professional, you really don't need a college degree. You can figure it out on your own. Uh, self-education is all you need. Well, I think that's a really good point, Tom. So are they better educated? They may not have had a better formal education, but one of the themes about discussion, an ongoing theme, is that self-made successful people do continuously educate themselves, and that's personal education, personal development. Yeah, and, and to this point, let me just say this. So I, I went to college. I, I, I had to work as a janitor 20 hours a week to get through college. I did, and I got an accounting degree. And do you know when I, when I graduated college, just like everybody else, 
I went and I took the CPA exam and I failed miserably. It took two years for me uh, studying and going to CPA review courses. And then after that two years, I actually understood accounting. And I, I passed the CPA exam. I got, for the most part, in the mid-80s on those tests. But uh, college didn't teach me accounting. I taught me accounting. I taught myself accounting. I learned it on my own. I was working, and then I was studying. So my point is, look, if you decided you wanted to become uh, whatever it is, a real estate expert, now you could go to college, and you could get a degree in finance that specializes in real estate. That's one way to do it. The other way is to maybe spend five to six hours a day studying, self-study, and learn everything there is to know about real estate. And I'm going to tell you, Michael, if you did that in probably a year to a year and a half, you would have enough knowledge that would give you the confidence to go out on your own. Definitely. That's a good point. Now, another myth is that rich people are not charitable and they hate poor people. And I know that's wrong and you know that's wrong. Uh, I know you know that we've just recently run the Metropole Charity Ball where we raised a huge amount of money for a, a charity called Very Special Kids. And that's one of the public charitable things that we do. But there's a lot of personal, private, charitable things we personally do, Pam and I, and I know you have your butterfly ball in America, but in general, wealthy people, in my experience, are very charitable, and they don't look down on the poor. They actually see it as their obligation to, to ha help others up rather than pull people down. Yeah, I, I would tell you, anybody who's listening to this, just join a local nonprofit, community nonprofit. Just do, join it for, say, four months, three months, four months. Get to know the people. Guess what you're going to find out? The people who are on the board of directors of that nonprofit that you select. In Australia, select, we don't use that expression. It's really, you're talking about a charity of sorts. Charity. Yeah. So a local charity. Yeah. Um, so th th just join any local charity. And within three months, get to know the people. And guess what you're going to find out, Michael? You're going to find out that the people who are on the board of directors of that charity are some of the most successful people in the community. So my point is this. The wealthy people devote an enormous amount of time and money. Let's say not an enormous amount. An enormous amount of their free time uh, to nonprofits or charities in their community. Uh, I, and once I figured that out, I learned that, that the wealthy devoted five hours or more to these uh, charities every month. I, do, I ended up before I, because of what I tried to do is follow their rich habits. And this was one of them. I ended up within a year, I was on five different charities and I had to uh, quit uh, three of them because I was spending, uh, you know, 15 hours a week on these charities and I was about to get divorced. So my point is, you know, everything in moderation, that's rich habit number six, join at least one of the charities in your local community uh, because what you're going to find is that's where the rich people are. That's not a reason to join. The reason to join, of course, is so that you can pass forward. And that's part of what we're trying to do. This is not charitable, what we're doing in these podcasts, but we are actually helping, trying to help people understand the way the rich, rich people think so that you can become richer as well. So part of it is passing your wealth on to other people and the knowledge we've got. Um, as we work through the myths that we have found that abound about rich people, another one is that money doesn't buy happiness. And that's not necessarily true. Money, any problem that money can solve isn't a problem. Now, there are lots of problems that money can't solve, health problems, relationship problems. Um, but, but recently, I haven't shared this with Tom, uh, this week, Pam was test driving a new car and she had this very expensive car, took it into our garage and unfortunately scraped the whole side of this test drive car and was embarrassed Ooh. to take it back to the dealer. It's insured <laughs> and we're going to pay for it. And we just got to pay the, the, the excess, the, 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 the upfront thing. And Pam was so upset when we got home, uh, when I got home. And I said to her, did you hurt somebody? Did you injure somebody? Did you injure somebody? Oh, but I damaged the car. And my answer to her was, any problem money can solve isn't a problem. We're just going to pay the insurance premium and the rest can get done. <laughs> so it's nice to be able to do that. Yeah. And, and what I, I learned in my rich habits study was that 
uh, when you're rich, it eliminates 67% of life's problems. Now, you're going to still have weather problems. You're going to still have aches and pains. Sometimes you're going to get sick. Uh, but those are problems everybody has anyway. But, I mean, if, if your uh, air conditioner breaks and you're poor, you probably will be going without an air conditioner for the whole summer. If you're rich, that problem is solved with a phone call. So it eliminates, being wealthy eliminates a lot of problems, which when you have the ability to solve a problem with money, that means you don't suffer from, um, from unhappiness. So in my opinion, uh, at least from my research, money does buy happiness. Maybe a better way to look at it, Michael, is money eliminates 67% of life's unhappiness. Good point. So I think to conclude this chat, I'd like to remind the listeners that if you're listening to this, you're probably already in the top 1% of the people in the world because the poorest people in Australia and the poorest people in the United States listening to this and in most Western countries are still wealthier than the rich people in a lot of other parts of the world. So don't be judgmental go back and listen to this podcast again and hear the myths that Tom and I were taught as children because neither of our parents were rich um, and see how many of these apply to you because, first of all, they're going to be holding you back now, but secondly, you're going to be passing them on because these things are contagious, Tom, aren't they? You do pass it on from generation to generation and rich parents create rich kids and parents who perpetuate these myths unfortunately, create poorer kids. Yeah, it's a generational cycle of wealth and the generational cycle of poverty. It just keeps going round and round. And wealthy people can raise their kids to be poor, just like poor people can raise their kids to be wealthy. Now, that's a good one. I hadn't heard that before, but you're right. So not all wealthy people pass on good habits because they themselves uh, don't feel worthy of it. Tom, thank you so much for our chat today. If you're wanting to hear more about these things, listen to our monthly regular Rich Habits, Poor Habits podcast. But in between, go to Tom's website, richhabits.net, and he has a daily blog about these topics. Uh, Go to richhabitspoorhabits.com and get a copy of our book, Rich Habits, Poor Habits. And I look forward to catching up with you again in a month's time to have another chat, Tom. Yeah, me too, Michael. I love these uh, talks that we have. As we come close to the end of another show, I just want to remind you that every week on a Tuesday, the regular Michael Yardney podcast comes out. But once a month on the first Thursday of every month, I have this extra show with Tom Corley because I love talking about these rich habits and poor habits, the things we've written about in our blogs and in our book, Rich Habits, Poor Habits. And I know you do because I keep getting great reviews on iTunes, Stitcher and all those other podcast apps uh, about the show. But the commonest discussions are about the mindset moments and the psychology, these sort of things we discuss with Tom Corley. I also want to say thank you for leaving those reviews. And when you do, I'm going to gift you one of my books. All you've got to do is email me at michael at metropole.com.au if I read out your review and I'll gift you any of my books you like. Now, there was a great review from New Zealand from, um, said great, uh, great advice from somebody who called themselves BDKWKDG. Okay, that must be a New Zealand name. Who knows? Five-star review, they're saying, love listening to Michael Yardney's podcast and receiving his daily emails that are full of encouragement. I'm from New Zealand and have found his way with words and advice to be very useful. Thanks, Michael, for keeping up the awesome work. Well, thank you for that fantastic review, and I look forward to being back with you again next week for my regular Michael Yardney podcast. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Michael Yardney podcast, which was brought to you by Metropole, who help their clients grow, protect and pass on their wealth through strategic property advice. If you got value from today's show, we'd really appreciate it if you would leave a review and we'll read it out on a future show and Michael will gift you one of his books as a way of saying thank you. Just go to michaelyardneypodcast.com forward slash review and let us know what you think. If you don't already subscribe, head over to iTunes or your favorite Android app. You'll find us there as Michael Yardney Podcast. If you'd like to gain instant access to the show notes, head across to michaelyardneypodcast.com. 
Watch out for our show next week. You'll learn some new ideas about property investment, success, and money in around 30 minutes. 